Once again, I want to thank you each and every engineer who has been able to spare his or her time to participate for this uh, uh, special webinar for the African engineers. We truly want to thank you from the deepest of our heart and we believe that is going to be an, a very interactive uh, session where we're going to uh, share together on how we can uh, model, do the analysis and also uh, try to come up with the result and to share some very, very uh, important features about uh, Maida Civil. I can see people are trying to come to come up so we can just give them some minutes for them to show up. Otherwise, I want to appreciate you so much for those who have been able to make it. I know it's not easy because most of you, we are coming actually, actually we are in the end of the year, so people are focusing on making their reports, coming up with the results, making up plans for the next year. So I know it has not been easy, but I want to thank you so much for this time. As you are waiting for other people, please, Feel free, feel comfortable, and you may be able to share with us any questions that you have. We have the question tag there. You can jot down the questions, and we are going to respond to you. Uh, by the way, I'm joined uh, with um, one of my engineer, my fellow technician from India, and uh, he is actually going to also participate on this webinar. And we are going to do our best to make sure that we, we are able to, to meet or maybe to, to derive the point or maybe the goal of this webinar to our, to the participant. So my fellow engineer is called Mr. Nan, Nandeep Gohil. So he's also on the Indian side. I hope this is going to be a very, very interactive time. So as you are waiting, please just uh, bear with me. We are going to start soon. As I know, time is very important. Uh, let's just hold for some minutes and then we shall start. Thank you. Uh, well, uh, we can't wait. And once again, I want to confirm. Please, can you hear my voice? Am I am I clear? Am I clear? If you can't hear my voice, please. Uh, okay, thank you, thank you. I can see some people confirming. That's really good. 
if you can hear my voice please you can confirm because i don't I, we don't want to leave you behind otherwise once again i want to thank you so much for for this time as uh, we're going to start uh, the webinar well this is a interactive webinar especially for the uh, it's so special for the african engineers so i know i'm joined with many engineers from different countries from tanzania from south africa from namibia all over africa and I know this is going to be a great chance, great uh, uh, time for us to learn and to be able to share much. So I said, time, as time is going on, so let's just start. And to begin with, uh, we share, we are going to, uh, to discuss on the pre-stress gutter bridge using the Midas, uh, Midas civil. So first, these are my slide. Uh, Looking at the overview, we are having, we're going to have the bridge geometric. That means using the FCM bridge wizard method. We're going to look at the geometric on how to go maybe to, to model this, uh, to input the sections, the materials and the tendon. Then we're going to also, uh, uh, check on the construction stage, looking at the section and the tender profile. And we are going to add what you call the time dependent material property assigned. And uh, I'm going to also to uh, input uh, the, uh, the load that we call the uh, superimposed dead load. And finally, we're going to run the analysis and uh, I'll be focusing on the construction stage analysis. So I'll be sharing with you the results and, uh, and especially the main part of uh, this, uh, this uh, analysis. Otherwise, uh, as we going on, now this is the this is the framework of the bridge. As we can see, we have the three three span, uh, and then we have the pier, and they are indicated there the length of the span, and this is the cross section, especially starting from the from the pier going down. So we're going to have uh, our bridge having the length of three hundred. And plus the, the width and not only that one, also we are going to have the two piers, as you can see from here, divided into three span. Now this is the construction stage or the construction sequence. So we start from the piers, we are going to, uh, uh, as, you, as you are, we are modeling or maybe we are doing the, uh, the designing of these uh, type of bridges, we actually have what you call the form travelers. So the foam travelers, most of the time, they, they are actually always input the concrete on the other side. So when we start, we start on one side, while, uh, while actually we're going to, uh, at the end of the day, we're going to, uh, to join at, uh, on the other side means on, means we have the two, the two piers. So you start on one side, uh, creating the construction stage on, at the end of, and at the end of the day, and then you have what you call the middle part whereby it's the lagging. So using the software, the software is able to, to calculate or the software is able to handle this, uh, automatic. So it means, uh, uh, the joining of this uh, lag, it can be done, it's going to be done by the software just automatic. So this is, this is the construction uh, sequence. So as I'll be demonstrating also further, we also have here like the, the support, providing the support for the, for the, for the, uh, for the, for this type of bridge. So it means at the end of the day, the, the lagging part is going to be covered by the software. Now this is the construction schedule. This is how it looks like. As uh, we've said, we have the three span and the two, uh, the two piers. And apart from that one now, when you look at on my, on the Y axis here, we have uh, the lines. Now these lines representing, uh, actually the numbers of days, like, uh, uh, for example, like 15 days. So we can see from here now we have the stages like one, two, three multiplied by four. It means it's going for the first, for the first, uh, peer table is going to take uh, 60 days in order to, like, before you, you make the second peer, uh, for the second peer table, it's going to take a period of 60 days, uh, to, to make the second one. So as I said, the line representing the numbers of days, that's 15. As you can see here, we have four multiplied by 15, that is 60 days. And also we have the segment. That means each segment takes uh, 12 days. So what does it mean? It means uh, seven days for the formwork and then five days for what we, uh, 
uh, five days actually for uh, for the curing. So in, it sum up uh, it sum up to twelve days. And then you also have the key segment. It means after after you've after after each uh, peer has been made and there is a key segment. So you can see these are not the same. So it means the time difference there is sixty days. So after creating after actually um, uh, uh, modeling the second peer, it's going to take a time frame of 10 days and we are going to have the key segment. And these are the tender lay layout. So we have the top tendons, you can see from here, and uh, we have the uh, the tendons being put into segment. That means we're going to input two tendons from six to 10. And also we have the bottom tender whereby we only have one segment on this side and the other and the other part we only have uh, again uh, two segment so this is the part of the layout of the tendon as you can see is the it has been anchorage on on the top part and the bottom part so as we are going to exp as i'm going to demonstrate to you i will be showing uh, more on these tendons also based on the construction stage so uh without wasting time i will just say uh, go straight forward to the uh i'll go straight forward to the software now this is how our software looks like this is my decibel that is 2016. so uh without wasting time so this is a software it has a diff, uh, several wizard and then you you can see so before we start we actually uh we have we prefer people to to focus on what we call, oh, just a little bit. So before we start, so you have to click it, the new button there. Then you start to have the new window there. So you can see the wizard, we have uh, different types of wizard here. We have on the nodes, like uh, for example, we have the view structures and everything. So before we start, it's actually recommended you start with the works because it gives you the flow of your work. That means whatever you input on the on the model or maybe on the window model, it's actually going to be recorded. Yeah, so it's good to start on the work as you can see what I'll be doing. Now I'll be going to structure because we're going to uh, to design or to uh, to make the the pre-stress gather bridge using the FCM. You can see we have several wizards, but I'll be focusing on the FCM. And this is the FCM, as you can see, it has the type one, there's a type two. So today we'll be focusing on type one, and then it has mods, like you can see the section, the tendon. Uh, then apart from that one also, as uh, we are going to, lo looking at this is the bridge that you're going to, to design today. So first we have to input the material. It has uh, actually several types of things that need to be inputted. Now, as uh, we can start from here, we have that button, you can click it. So either if you're starting from step by step, you can click it add and then you have something like this one whereby you can put the type of material that you want or you can choose the type of the standard. Or maybe if you prepare something in advance, you can now import it. Like for example, I'm going to, I'm going to import whatever material that uh, I've already prepared before. So these are the material. I have uh, different types of material. So I'll click it OK. It's already applied on that part. Then checking on the section also, because also if you're, uh, you're going step by step, you can click add. But now I had already prepared in advance. So I'll just go to the, to the, uh, the one that I prepare and then I'll just uh, select, select only uh, one section that is the peer and then I click it OK. It's already applied. So you can see here we have different types of material. And then we have also the section as only one section that is a peer. And the numbers of the peer, as you can see, we only have over how many spans? Those are three spans, so we're going to have two peers. And uh, how about the stage duration? We're going to put uh, 12, as you can see, as you've seen before, representing seven, the numbers uh, representing the, the formwork, and then five representing the, uh, the curing. And we're going also to use the method of the cast in. Now, if, for example, you're putting the radius uh, for the curve, especially you want the graph to appear in curve, you can now put the, uh, you can now put the, the radius. You can choose either convex or concave. But now we're just going to focus on a straight, uh, 
straight bridge. And we have now the peer table, so we, you can input the number that you want to input here. But I'd already prepare for this uh, for this part, so I'll just say uh, import it. So I'll just import it, and you can see now we have the peer table there. And this part here actually uh, maybe you, it may look a little bit uh, complicated, but uh, uh, with the help of the diagram, it will help you to understand uh, where is the peer table, where is the base, and you know everything. So when you import the K, like now this is representing on the outside part, the exterior part, the exterior zone, and this is the interior interior zone. So you input the data, and also after you finish, because it's actually symmetrical, you can see from here the FCM is actually the same. And for the zone also, for example, if you don't want to put uh, the data like that one, you can now use the advanced. And you can see for us, we only have uh, uh, the peer table tool, uh, one and two. So if you want to put more peer table, you can actually use the advanced uh, uh, feature to input the, uh, the, other, the other peers. But now we are not focusing on that, so we don't need to uh, struggle on that. And also for the key segment also, if you want to put also more, like now we only have uh, three, you can also uh, add more depending with, uh, uh, with the numbers of the segment that you want to put. Applies also with, with this part also for the zone, the same thing also. You can actually, you can see, this is what we have already inputted. So if you want to put more also, you can add more zone on that. But now this is really uh, not important for us. So after we've done that one already, we can now check on the peer, uh, peer table placing. You can see there we have uh, the peer table. Now, as you've seen from the, uh, from the presentation, I, saw, I showed you that uh, the first peer, uh, uh, the time difference between the first peer and the second peer is 60. So if maybe you want to put maybe another time difference, you can put here, just uh, select. And then if you have several uh, peer table, then you put the duration. But already it's 60, so that one is OK. And then uh, how about the member age? So this part is very important because uh, it helps you to understand the, uh, the time of the curing or maybe at what time uh, the, uh, the bridge is going to gain the strength as you're going to put the, uh, the loads. So for the F FSM, we give it uh, the, the days that is 60 days, the key segment at 10, and the peer table takes 15. And for the segment, it's five. And for the peer now, it's uh, 100 days. So after we've done on the on the mod part, so we're going to the section. Now the section also, because as you can see from the beginning there, I imported, so it means it's already applied the automatic, or you can import whatever uh, uh, section that you are to input. And this is the diagram here. We can actually view it. You can see uh, this is the, the drawing. And apart from that one also, uh, for the form traveler load, you can include it and also we can include the the weight concrete load, so you can put the numbers of the force that you want to put there and the intrusive. So as you can see from there. And then uh, let's look at the tendon. Tendon now also we have to input this one. You can input it, let's say manual, or you can import it by let's say after preparing. Then you can just import it and put it. You can just uh, be automatic. Now let's look at the tendon because we have the different types of material. So we just click it add and I'll start with the uh, top tendon. Now for the type of, uh, uh, for the type, the tendon type, we have actually different types of tendon. Like you can see here, the eternal, pre-tensions, the internal, post-tensions and the external. So today we'll be focusing on the post-tension that is internal and the material type because already we had inputted before that is tendon. And we have to put the total tendon area. So we just click this one, then we choose. Uh, so okay, we we choose that one, and then the number of strange that becomes nineteen. And I click it apply, and then it's uh, actually recommended to use uh, the uh, the C B uh, the C E B because it gives the best result. So. So this one, I, I, and also we have down here like the units, you can change the unit, for example, whichever unit that you, you have, and uh, you can apply for the coverage of friction. Uh, and then also the wobble friction factor, maybe I can put it to, 
yeah, you can just leave it like that or no, you can change it. And then we have the beginning and the end. And the bonding type, either you can say unbonding or maybe the bonding. So you click it uh, OK or just apply because first of all, OK, it indicates there's some, some error. Let's see what, what problem do you have here. Ah, OK, so I did not put the ductic diameter. You can say that one is 0 .0 0 0.0.103. And we click it apply. It's already applied. You can see. It's already applied, so we're going to put now the bottom tender. Uh, it's have it has the same values. I'll just change that one 0 0.2, and you click it. Okay, so we had already we have already the tender, the top part and the bottom part. So just close this one. Now already we've put the tender, and then we have. Uh, Let's see the number of the tender. So it means it's equal. Then for the N1, it has the seven tender. N3, it has six. And then N5 has two. N7 has two. Then uh, uh, N2 has three. And you can see, so these are these indicating the numbers of tender that have been, in, been applied on the numbers of uh, N. So that's OK. Then let's look at the jacking stress. So for the jacking stress, as you can see before, we had the, the yield strength and also we have the ultimate strength. So you can choose whichever uh, strength that you want. You can put the 0 0.72 for the uh, for the year for the for the ultimate, or you can also put for the yield. And let's look at the top tender. Uh, okay, from here, like for the, as, let me just show you on the on the presentation. You can see the top tender we have two, so it means the two tenders been applied on the 6 to 10 and then uh, for the bottom part on that means on my left hand side is just one on the my light, uh, bottom uh, right is there are only two so we have to apply this one okay this one tells me i have to save my i have to save my model so i just say tests two i'll save it down so already i already apply for the uh, uh, the top part that is the peer table that is two and then from uh, for the remaining one becomes two, but for the six up to ten, we only have the two tendon. So that one is okay. Then for the bottom part, it's only one. Apart from this one, becomes a zero, which is already applied also. And the, on the, the left hand side, we have zero. It's only five and eleven. Those are they have two uh, two tendon. And then this part also is very important. Like um, after each construction stage, meaning there's what you call grotting. So you can put like a, the change of the tendon, let's say after every every stage or maybe after two stages. So it depends on what you want. And here is the anchorage position. So uh, for example, this is the cross part and this is the length. So uh, especially is the distance is just between, uh, you can put a fraction between zero to one. So uh, for, for this anchorage position. So if we can see now, everything now is applied. So this is, this is what we call now the FCM uh, bridge wizard. So we've already put our model. There is, we have the two numbers of peers. The section is already applied there. We also have the tendon. Now you can save this one. When you save this one, you can actually use it later. So it means later maybe when you want to, uh, you want to, to actually model this kind of bridge, you don't need to, to input the data again. You can just save it and then later on, you can actually just use that wizard to help you now to save your time. So we, so now we've already made the wizard. So we just click it OK, and you're going to have the the model. So that's the important, or maybe it's the important of the wizard. It saves your time, as you can see now. I'm very sure that uh, if you are told to uh, to model this type of bridge, the priestess get a bridge, it will take maybe. For some people, it will take like years, or maybe it will take even some. It will take a lot of time. But uh, using the wizard, so this shows how the power of the wizard is. So it means uh, already the wizard has already calculated. It has already put the uh, the tendons, the loads, and then uh, uh, the boundaries and the support. So first, let me just say uh, select this one. Uh, I will select first of all uh, the tendon. Point we, have, we need to check on that one and the load. I will just check on the nodal load. So you can see, uh, 
those are the nodal, uh, nodal load and you can actually view the tendon being applied already automatic. So let me just view it from the first construction stage. So I'll just uh, use that one. So to view it, just click it and scroll it just forward and you're able to view it. Now from here, you can see this is the formwork uh, load that been applied on the pier. And this part here is the moment. And now we have the two tendons on the, on the pier, on the pier segment, you see. So as you scroll down the construction stage, you are able to see how it actually been applied. So you can see, uh, uh the moments, the tendon, and also the formal, the formwork load, you see. So, let me just put it front view, as you can see from there. So already from each construction stage, as you scroll down, you can see how it has been applied. And this helps you to save time when you're using the wizard. You can actually uh, do a lot of things and come up with many uh, project activity. So now I'll focus, I'll now go to the loads. I'll put the, uh, before putting the loads, I have to put the time identity. So I'll just go to the property or you can just right click it and go to property and choose uh, uh, the time, the time dependent material, the creep and shrinkage. Or you can just use the property. You go to the creep and shrinkage, the, the compress strength and then material link and then the change. Or you can just use the mouse and mouse also. It's to it save your time also. Click it add. So. We have different types of material, so I will just yeah, input the value there. As we said, uh, we used before that is a 1990, that becomes 4000. And then the not, no, notational size of the members, uh, it's one. So whatever value you put here, the software actually will calculate everything and put the right value. So it's another advantage that will help you not to actually to worry, it means if you're not sure with the values, you can just put in uh, uh, the, uh, any value and the computer, the, the software will just calculate it automatic to input the correct values. So for the normal or rapid hardening of the cement, we select that one. Then uh, for the beginning of the shrinkage is after three days. So we can show the results, you can see from here, we have already the table, the creep coefficient. Uh, we just apply, uh, okay, there's something here actually, and uh, it's very important. You can see when I click it apply, it doesn't apply. Why? Because on the first part here, you cannot apply the time ident time dependent material on the construction stage. You can only apply when you have the base. So it means I've got to restart on this one. I'm sorry for that. So I have to make sure that I'm operating on the base level. So I'll just go again on the property. So you have to remember. So the, th the good thing also with the software is that when you make a mistake, it tells you. You can see from the message window when it was telling me that uh, you cannot input the time dependent on the construction stage, but you have to input it on the on the on the base. So once again, uh, we have that one. Then uh, uh, four thousand one show the graph we have the graph there and we can apply this one we we'll put for this uh, second material uh, okay we have it there show the graph we have it already the graph of uh, the creep coefficients and it's okay so already we have the two material being applied you can see as i said from the work there uh, uh, the work actually helps helps you you see, whatever you input, it helps you to what uh, to to show you. It shows the step that you are you are you are doing on on the modeling part. So you can close this part, and then now we're going to put the uh, compression and strength. Click it add there. We have the two types of material. Uh, now you can use the code or you can use the user. So you can have uh, other, you can prepare uh, this part, just uh, copy and paste and bring it here and it can be able to be applied. But now we're going to focus on the code. So uh, as I said before, this is the best, the CEB is the best code, give you the accurate result. And uh, for the, uh, 
for the uh, for the main comprehensive we can just put uh, uh, that one then we can redraw the graph looks like that one then we go to the second material so the same thing also uh, uh, we can also redraw it you can see from there uh, we click it okay so already we have we have uh, uh, the time dependent material creep and shrinkage then the comprehension and strength it's already been applied so blue here indicates uh, the color blue indicates it has not been applied on this model yet so the black one means everything it has been applied so next we're going to look at the material linkage so try to assign it to the right path on selected material and then just click it add and the second type of material we have it add then you close the path uh, okay so then next we're going to actually uh to uh, the change of the property so before i go to the change of the property uh, i need to put some load on this one but uh, before going that one let me just go to the change of property so i'll just remove this one first so i'll just go to the display and uh, uncheck it that was the nodal load the other one was uh, tenant profiling just uncheck it to make it work easier so now we're checking on the ch uh, change property means now we're going to assign it to the model uh, okay so this is the not notation so first we have to select everything there select all and then you just click it apply so it has already been applied you can see from there so everything it has already been applied so that is the that is the most important thing of the work tree actually it helps you it's like a diary it gives you the step the every step that you input on the model it actually shows you there so you can see the property the material the tender the boundary they've already been applied now next i'm going to uh, actually to input the load as i said before the superimposed loads so we have the element uh, the element loads there so before that one let's go to the load case so this already it has already been actually been applied by the wizard so it means i just have to add the uh, only one type of the super load, uh, super dead load and since it's a construction stage i'll just choose the construction stage uh the construction stage there let's add it there close this part and then let's go to the load group we need to put on the load group the same load that is the super dead load superimposed dead load so just click it add you can see it's already added there now we're good to go so as you're going to put the the beam loads i'm going to apply it on the superimposed dead load so then i'm the name of the group that is a superimposed dead load and then on the direction of the global z and i'll put this one as a minus three three point four two and uh, before i proceed i have to select uh, the beam part so i'll select by single i'll select by single so you can see i've already selected by single and then when you click it apply it has already been applied pop you can now view the beam loads already they've been applied so uh it doesn't take a lot of time you can see from there so i will now show you how the load that i've applied there, the beam load how we can actually use it from the construction stage so first this is the construction stage number one at yeah, the time duration it shows you the stages and the name and the duration that is 12 that means seven seven days representing the form of work and the five days for the curing and then it also has the element we have uh, the element we have the boundary we have the loads and apart from that it has also the act uh, activation and deactivation so uh, what do you mean by activation meaning uh, this yeah the parts that you want to be the parts that you want them to be applied in the model so you can activate them but uh, the unwanted part you can select them and deactivate on the other side so the software does it automatic so for example let's look at this part we have the boundary it has already activated this part the support let's check on the load as you remember we had put uh, 
uh, the loads that at the beginning. So it means this construction stage one for the weight concrete load it will take uh, after seven days. You see, and let's now check on on this part. You remember the pier? We did we had put the pier how many days? One hundred days, and then. The group that's 15, the group two also 15, and the peer two is also the same because it's symmetric, it's 100 days. You can, so the software has already actually uh, uh, activated automatic. So I didn't do anything on that. Now we can also scroll down and check for the group two, the same thing also, we have the boundary there. The loads you can see. So the deactivated loads means the unwanted part, it has already been deactivated on this. So the computer does, the software does it automatic. So it helps to, actually uh, to avoid error because when you do this kind of uh, uh, modeling manually, you come up with a lot of error because this is an, is an IT based uh, software. So it helps to do everything accurately based, based on itself. So when you scroll down, you can see the type, uh, the elements, the activations, the type of the load, the one which have been activated, the one which have been deactivated. So it's automatically been applied by, by the, by the software. So uh, I'll be focusing on the last part and uh, this time I want to put uh, the duration of 10,000 10, days. So the reason why I'm putting the 10,000 10, days so that I may be able to see the effect of the creep and shrinkage. So and uh, I'll actually apply it on the superimposed dead load. So I'll just say activate it on this other side and click it OK check it on this other part there it's already applied so it means everything now it's okay so it means after 10,000 10,000 days i'll be able now to see the effect of the creep and shrinkage so this is really important now having everything done already so we had the loads we had the boundary you can see here also uh where, okay we have the boundary here let me just show you just right click it and then you display, you can see the boundary. Um, you can view it by rotating at any angle that you want. That's the good thing also of having uh, several types of icons that uh, helps and ease, ease in your work while you're doing the modeling part. So right, uh, try to right click it and, and display. So it means everything has been applied. Now, before we perform the analysis, we have to actually check to confirm for the construction stage. So this is the construction stage control data. Uh, first, let's look at the time effect here, time dependent effect. So whatever we've been put there, the creep and shrinkage, we have it there. The convergence for the creep, the five, and then. So this is actually the tendon, the uh, tendon tension uh, loss effect for the creep and, and shrinkage. So we have to. It has been checked already automatically by the software. So I didn't touch anything on this part. It means the software already has actually uh, confirmed it by itself. So because this is by default, I just uh, leave it the way it is. Now on this part, so we have the final stage for the last stage and the time dependence. And we have uh, the cable pension for the force, uh, for the internal forces. And then I would like to consider the, uh, the initial uh, tangent displacement for the erecting structure. So that is all, and then save the output of the current uh, stage. So as you confirm on that one, then, then the beam section property, we have the change with tendon, so it's okay. So now I'm ready to perform my analysis. So we have the performing analysis, we have the two button, by the way, of this part here and this part. So it's same, same function. So let's see how long it will take. So down here, you can see we have the message window. It will actually uh, show you, this message window helps you to know whether you've made any mistake or you are on the right track. So now it's running the analysis and it tells me, you can see the message window gives you the information. If you made any mistake, you can see from there and you're able to correct it. So let's see how long it will take to run the analysis. Well, you can imagine that is how uh, that is what 13.34 seconds and the analysis is done now i'm very sure if uh, if you're doing it manual you take a lot of time of maybe or you're using let's say uh, other type of maybe programmers it will take a lot of time but imagine so that is a good thing of uh, using my decibel it helps to save your time because always 
time is very important. If we can actually be able to save our time, then it means then we can bring a lot of development in our country. So it's already, uh, it's already the analysis is done and the, the time taken there, you can see from there is 13.34 seconds. So you can imagine if we are doing a lot of project using the, this, uh, the program, then we can come up with a lot of uh, uh, good result. So let's check on the result. So uh, we have uh, different types of results, but first I'll check on the deformation. And for the result, I have to check, let's say, on on the first construction stage. I'll check the deformation. Let's check on the result as a displacement contour. Now we have uh, uh, the load case here. We have the dead loads, the tendon primary, creep primary shrinkage. So it's more advisable to use the primary part, the primary for calculating this type of the contour. Now, uh, oh, I can just choose the summation. Then we have the step for the first step. Maybe if you, you've used the user defined, you can use the user, user step or the last part now. So you can view the result according to uh, the step that you're given there. So let's check on the first step. Uh, the components, uh, we have this one. And then the type of the displacement, the contour, and then the sales of deformation and the legend. Click it apply. You can see. So you can view this is for the first stage. But uh, looking at this one and the result doesn't seem to be real. So let's make it real. Let's look at the deform. Let me just put there 0 0.5. Make it real. At least now it appears. Now it's okay. So now this is the legend that will give you the result showing the uh, the maximum deformation and the minimum deformation. Now let's say uh, try to view it. Uh, let's me let me try to view to view it on a on the user step. So a user step it will actually decrease. You can see. Now if I proceed it on the last step again, it keep on decreasing. Now uh, you can also view it uh, each stage. You can just scroll down, scroll down. You can see. Just scroll it down, scroll down, and you come up with something like that. So, or you can actually uh, check any types of uh, of uh, loads that or load case that you want. Now let's check on the current current uh, step displacement applied. So this is the current step displacement. Uh, you can roll it down and see it how it appears and you have the result on the other side. Uh, okay, and then let's check on the last step for, let me uncheck this one, just click it, the stage step. So you can, you have that one. That's how it appears. Uh, okay. Uh, and this is what actually we we term as a uh, camber camber stage. So you can you can actually see it. That's the camber stage. So you have the value there. Now we can now check the clear result of the camber camber reaction. So we just go on the result. Then you go to the camber reaction there. So since you are dealing with the FCM, so we're going to go to the. By the way, FCM that is a free cantilever uh, bridge or you can also say free cantilever method so just choose the controlling part the bridge gather element it's already selected supported nodes the key segment click it okay then next we're going to check on the graph the fcm camber graph now you have uh, different types of loads here you can choose any type of load that you want and you can come up with the graph but i just want to check on the summation just click it okay it brings up the the graph so this is the camber graph as you can see from there this is how the camber graph looks so i just want to select only one uh, some part to explain the result and this is how it looks like so we have the two nodes here the bottom nodes and the top nodes so the top nodes uh these are shows uh the form, the form work that should be considered when actually you're doing the camber. So what, what, uh, camber need to be considered like the form work. And this one, uh, the bottom part shows now, uh, uh, what should be actually like how the deformation is going to appear after you've removed the form work. 
So that's really important anyway. As I said before, uh, when you're considering what should be considered on the Kamba control, like the formwork, and then after now, meaning after you've removed the formwork, how is the deformation going to appear? So this is the meaning of the bottom and the top part. So just right click it and then zoom all. So that is the camber. And then after we have the camber reaction, we can actually check on the tendon graph loss. Now these are the tendon you can see from here. Uh, just choose uh, the top one. Now we have the tendon there for the construction stage one and we have the animation you can see from the animation. You can record this one if you want. I see it shows you how uh, it moves on the base on the what you call the accumulative uh, deflections you can see from there. So so that's the camber. We can just uh, remove that one already we have. So then next we're going to check on we're going to check on the on the gutter uh, the gutter uh, the bridge gutter. So we have uh, different types of step. So before before going to this one first, uh, I'll close it. I'll go to the uh, result table and check on the tendon. So first we look at uh, the tendon loss. Now these are the tendon loss. You can see they are the stress after immediately the elastic deformations, the creep and shrink, relax, uh, relax, relaxation losses. Now you can choose the type of the stage that you want to see. Then let's say the last stage. Click it apply. Now it gives you the value you see for the stress, for the creep and shrinkage, the stress elastic. And by the way, you can right click this one and uh, export this one to the Excel. So this would be very vital for the engineers. Uh, or you can also come up with what you call the dynamic report table. So uh, it's very, very compatible, meaning we are, it's the, the software is compatible with the MS uh, program. So if you want to accept, export it, this one on the Excel, you just click it and it be exported on Excel file. Now we can also, uh, on the tendon, we can also check on what you call the tendon coordinates. Now these are the coordinates for the tendon. Uh, this will help you to create what you call the tendon profile actually. So we have there the number of the coordinates and the direction and also Let's check on what you call the tendon stress limit check. So from here we can actually check all and then it will actually come up with the result. So once again, as this one goes on, if you have any question, please just say don't hesitate. You can actually jot down the questions and we'll get back to you as soon as possible. So it's uh, still uh, it's opening up. Now this this is the tendon. We're going to check the limits uh, of the tendons. So while it's running down, so I hope uh, everything is clear on 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 your side. Okay, that's it has already opened. So we're going to check it. Let's say check it all, confirm it all. Then you have now you can check now the the at the anchorage the type of value you can input the value there. And then, or maybe away from the anchorage, or maybe at service, click it OK. Now it's going to, you can see it from there now, the tendon stress, and then we have the tendon's limit. So they've already been applied. So that's all for the tendon. Uh, I've not left anything out on this. Now we can now check on the construction stage. Let's check on the elements property at each stage. See, you can see. Uh, at the start of the stage, at the end of the stage, you can see the element property for the stage one. And you can also see the static elastic or maybe the end of the elastic cumulative uh, shrinkage. And finally, you can see the creep coefficient. So that's all for the tendon. And then uh, finally, uh, I want to maybe just remove this one. Go back to the model. Okay, so I'll just go back to the initial model. Now, already we've seen that one. So next, let's uh, look at uh, what you call, we have seen the Kanban, we've seen the, uh, uh, what you call the tendon loss. Now, uh, you can also check other results, for example, the beam diagram. Uh, you can choose the types of the load that you want to check the result. 
you can choose the component, uh, the, uh, the display option, whether the line or maybe the solid. The scale also you can increase or decrease, and you have the contour. Let's put the deform and uh, yep, I click it apply. It's already apply. Let me put the deform so it appears like that. Now let's check on uh, summation. Now let me check on the solid part. Apply it so. Because it's deform, okay. Let me remove the deform. So that's how you apply on the deform. That's how it looks like. Now, without the deform, how does it look like? So it looks like that. So you can see the result on on the right hand side where we have the legend. It shows you the maximum, uh, uh, the maximum uh, beam diagram forces and the minimum. You can see from there. And you can actually uh, generate what you call the dynamic report from this one. So just right click it, go to the dynamic report image. Uh, click it okay. Uh, okay, let's just read, let's go to the report now. Uh, you remember it's the beam diagram, so go to the tool and we have the dynamic report generation of the dynamic report there. Click it okay. Now you have what you call the MS uh, uh, file, so we just actually drag it, and there you are. So you can save this one. And send it to the engineer. You can actually use it for other other functions also. So having having look uh, at that one already now we we are actually uh, we've seen the result. So let's go back again to the result there. We can check on the stress. In this case, uh, let's check on the stress on the beam stresses on the PSC PSC uh, summations. So you can choose the section position. Or you can also choose uh, what you call the components, any component that you want. And you can choose either line or load, so just apply the solid. Then the legend, then click it apply. So it has already been applied. So you can see that's the shape that we had for the pre-stress concrete. Now uh, that's, the that's the diagram, you can view it at any angle that you want. And then let's check on the bridge uh, gather diagram. So you can change actually. Maybe for example, you want to check check the different types of uh, load cases. You can uh, you can actually check. Let's check on this one. So you're supposed to have the diagram. Uh, first of all, okay. Uh, before checking on this one, uh, we have the result there already. We've seen this one. So for the diagram. Okay, so you can also check, let's say, for example, for uh, name it, just let's say on the Z direction. You can increase the scale factor. Oops, that doesn't appear, so you can just check on that one. Or the position, depending on the position, so you have the position there. So finally, so this say, uh, brings us to the end of this presentation and i'm very sure that uh, it was uh you've get something from from it so once again i just want to emphasize on on the wizard and uh the software it saves your time as you've seen from the analysis and then it also help you to model your your diagram as quick as possible so once again, thank you so much for your participation and uh, truly from the deepest of my heart, I want to appreciate you and I believe that uh, we can, we're going to have more and more uh, interactive webinars uh, like this one. And then also, please if, feel free that uh, if you have any questions, any technical questions, you may actually send us in advance. We may prepare the webinar uh, based on the request that you, the request that you give to us. So this was more general uh, demonstration. So if you have a like particular uh, topic, you may send us via email and we'll be able to respond to you. Uh, otherwise, I want to appreciate again. Thank you so much for your time.